Okay, well welcome back again to Creo Parametric. We're in the process of creating an assembly now. Um, we've created some rods, which are these over here, and we've created cubes. Now we're going to bring them together to form an assembly. So these 10 mil holes are made to match up with these 10 mil cylinders at the end of each side of the rod and we're going to join them together now precisely using Creometrics assembly, Creo Parametrics assembly function. Alright, now to do that I'm going to start a, a new folder to bring you in from scratch. So let's start with new and this time instead of creating a part you're going to click on create an assembly. So click on that little dot icon there and subtype design is fine. We'll call it, give it a name, we'll call it um, assembly 2 so I've done one already and then we'll click OK so Creo should bring us up a new screen here with our datum planes here ready to go now when you look at the um, the ribbon at the top here there's the icon that symbolizes the assemble function now if we click on the assemble function um, you can choose the first menu or just simply click on the icon, the first item on the menu. Click on that and Creo will say, well, what's the first part that you want to assemble? Now, there's a lot of parts here, but I happen to know that cube 4 is that part there that I want to assemble. So I click open and Creo will drop that part right on the middle of my screen. Now, you notice if you've got this orientation, almost like a compass um, wheel around here. That wheel enables you to be able to move the object if you click on the arrow in one direction or another. You can go up or down, this up, or if you want to grab the center ball of the object you can move the whole object in space relative to its original position. But We don't really want to do that, we're quite happy to leave it where it is. But that's what that signifies. And you'll see this um, direction ball pop up left, right and centre and you'll know what it's, it's there for. You can also rotate the object by the way by clicking or highlighting one of these um, these radial curves. For example that one rotates it in the vertical section. Here we can rotate it around on a horizontal plane. So you can rotate it, You've got a lot of movement there which you can adjust precisely if you like. Okay, that's fine. Um, notice up the top here that this box has appeared, comma, component placement. And component placement has several different items, many of them which aren't able to be checked, um, probably because there's only one component at the moment. But this section here, component reference, is set to automatic, which is good for us at the moment. And this is very important here. This is related to constraints and constraints are basically rules that force the object to be kept in a certain position or can only move in a certain way. So it's important when you're placing constraints are important. How is this object constrained? And it says no constraints so we can move it anywhere we like at this point in time. Alright so the next thing is um, we're okay with this, we're happy with this object here. So we're going to um, click on OK, which we did. Now we're going to click on Assemble again. We want to bring in another component. This time we want to bring in our strut. So it's, we're going to use strut 2 from our menu here, menu of parts. Now all these should be in the one spot because you've been saving them in your correct directory, in your working directory. Haven't you? Yes, I thought so. OK, so let's open up strut 2. And here it is. Now you'll notice that Creo has place this strut, it looks a bit different to yours I guess, uh, it has this uh, extra little sleeve or flange on here, don't let that bother you, yours will be look very similar to this. Now we've got strut number two over here, or strut two here, and we've got our cube there, but they're not yet lined up in position. I'm going to use a zoom tool to be able to focus on a certain section, left click and bring it into relief. Now remember that little ball that we had sitting at the background there. That little ball can come quite in handy at some stages if we want to be able to to move the object. Now I want to happen, I do want to um, separate 
move them aside apart a little bit so I'm clicking on the center of that axis you can see over here and I'm dragging it backwards a little bit so there's a bit of distance between the parts you'll see why in just a minute okay I'll bring them up a little bit closer once again I'll bring them onto center screen using the zoom tool which is good and draw them a little bit closer using the rolling button in between the two mouse buttons okay so next section if you want to get rid of that zoom tool icon that's sitting there just click your center rolling button and it will disappear now I'm about to um, I haven't yet saved this because I want to define exactly how this part is going to fit into this cube and I'm going to do it using constraints now constraints at the moment it says there are no constraints but I'm going to select some surfaces that are going to match up to each other so let's say this inner surface in here I'll try and bring it a bit more into center screen for you so you can see it a bit more clearly okay this surface here I want to match that surface up the inner surface here is going to be matching left click to dispose of that um, zoom icon I'm going to match this by left clicking on it and you'll notice that coming out from here is a green line looks a bit like a sort of a, a tendril of a spider's web and it's attached to the surface that I've clicked and I'm going to draw this and like a little sticky spider's web I'm going to draw it in a minute <laughs> all the way across well I'm hoping to do that anyway okay well if that ever happens to you just go up here and get yourself into standard orientation and uh, you'll be able to sort of see your part again there we go all right now at the moment that little sticky spider web's gone all the way off into the distance but it should still be attached when it catches up to me yes to my cursor so all very good sticky spider web has begun on that surface it's now attached to my person my cursor and I'm going to join it to the surface of this rod which is going to mate with the surface on the cube so you see how now I'm highlighting that surface of the cylinder the, the 10 millimeter cylinder now I'm going to left click on it to tell, tell Creo yes I want those two surfaces to be coincident you see how that little box appears and it says coincident well coincident means to be mating to be touching so these two surfaces Creo knows are going to be coincident and now on the status box up here you can see that the object is partially constrained before it was not constrained at all it could be moved anywhere relative to each other these two pieces now it is partially constrained that means it can be only moved in a certain plane so if I were to try and move the object back it would move backwards and forwards but it would only move in a certain plane I couldn't move it from side to side like I once could before so I'll try and show that to you um, by uh, grabbing this uh, trying to find a little ball over here there it is there see it there all right now I could move this before anywhere in space now I can only move it backwards and forwards see that I can't move it up and down it won't let me it'll only let me go backwards and forwards because I've told Creo that those two surfaces that I've selected the inner surface of that cube hole and the outer surface of the boss on the rod must connect so they can only go up and down right now the next thing we want to do is get to make it fully constrained is we're going to define another surface so I'm going to scroll in a little bit here and I'm going to click this surface here see I'm going to highlighting that surface there and I'm going to get my little spiders web tendril and I'm going to hold down my middle mouse button and swing this object around a little bit Ooh, there we go so you can see my little mouse tendril is going to touch that surface there and see how the sign comes up and says coincident just above it that means that I want the surface on the front of the cube and the surface on that uh, face which I've highlighted here to touch and when I touch you'll see both objects move together in exactly the right spot so I'm left clicking there they go so now I've caused the object to be fully constrained so there it is 
it's now mated up against the two parts exactly the way I want it. And notice the status here, what I'm pointing to is called fully constrained. Now that I've done that and I've got the two parts mated up just the way I want them, I can click OK. And when I click OK, Creo says beautiful, I know exactly what you're doing. I know that's exactly where the parts and how you want those parts to be and it's happy. So there we go. So that's how you're going to join these parts together. So I want you um, to have a go at this and join uh, not just uh, one strut to one cube but join four cubes together using struts. So you'll have to do it in different holes and move different parts in. Now to bring your next part in, let's say we wanted to bring another strut, just click on assemble this time I'm going to bring in strut number one because I think it looks a bit more like the struts that you're used to. And another strut will appear. I believe it will at some point. Go to standard orientation. Another strut will appear. I'm waiting for it to appear. When that strut appears you'll be able to fit it in to the next hole. It looks like my strut's gone missing at the moment. But simply bring it in, bring each item in, and then fit them together the way I've shown you over here. Okay, good luck.